Welcome back to another video. Today, we are going to go over this person, Honda CRV, go over the specs, go through the exterior, interior, and finally go over the most common issues with this generation. As we all know, every car has its own fair share of issues. It does not mean they're not reliable. Hi, my name's Chris, and we are at Drive 512 Auto Ranch here in Austin, Texas. And they're nice enough to allow me to go through all their cars to potentially help you all out. The first gen Honda CRV is from 2012 to 2016. This one is a 2014 EXL model and it has a 2.4 liter inline four motor, 185 horsepower, and it gets 25 to 31 miles per gallon. The front wheel drive model gets 26 to 33 miles per gallon. And as you can see, there's a lot of room in this engine bay in case you ever needed to fix anything. In 2015, it did receive a facelift, which kind of modernized the front fascia of the CRV. And the first gen came with two transmissions here in America, the CVT and the five-speed automatic transmission. And they both have like their own issues, but they're not major. And I'll talk about that later in the video. And the towing capacity is 1,500 pounds. Let's go ahead and check out the interior. Thud of the door sounds okay. It sounds light, which is something I'd expect from an economy car. The steering wheel is a nice size. The controls on the door panel is as I'd expect. It's easy to reach, it's right in my grasp. I like these captain chair armrests, very comfortable. The shifter, right, smack dab in the middle, which is nice. That's typical with the CRV. Dash is very uh, three dimensional, which I like a lot actually. You don't have a commanding view of the road. This is not a driver's car. This is a family car. I have a lot of legroom here in the front seat. The legroom is the same for the passenger seat right here. Since this is the top trail model, it does come with a wood grain, heated seats, a backup camera, and leather seats. You can tell it's leather seats by the way it's stitched and the way it presses down that that is true leather. This is fake leather. It has two cup holders right in the middle, a storage bin with enough room to put your baby in with enough room for just about anything you need. And it's got a sunroof. Check that out. And you do have powered seats. Storage spot right here. Um, that's like a phone pocket. I am 5'8 and it's very comfortable where my feet are. I have enough room. What I like a lot about this is the flat floorboard. That is very nice especially for an all-wheel drive model. Not an ample amount of foot space, but that's with this seat basically fully back. This is a nice family car in my opinion. If I was still young, I'd be very happy getting in and out of this car. When I was sitting in the back seats right there, I honestly did not expect how much room would be back here. It looks a lot smaller up there than it does back here. You have a cover for all your groceries if you want to cover it all. You have these latches that will bring down the seats automatically. This particular option is the maroon color or the Basque Red Part 2. Although this is the pre facelift model, it still looks very nice and modern. I honestly do like this black trim that goes all around the CRV. These headlights still look pretty good and it still stands out the crowd, in my opinion, on the road. These are 17 inch 10 spoke wheels with a nice meaty tire which will soak up most of the bumps on the road, which is partly what gives the car a comfortable ride. The back looks fantastic too. I just love these tail lights. It's very CRV. And it does have a nice side profile as well. You can tell it's very aerodynamic by just the way the whole car slopes. So it's time to go over all of these common issues. None of these issues will leave the car stranded on the side of the road. And once again, every used car has its own fair share of issues. And it's your responsibility as an owner to save up money for potential repairs. You gotta add that savings to your monthly payment to whatever car you buy. So let's start with the transmissions. Like I said, it comes with a CVT or a five-speed automatic. So with the five-speed automatics, they are the more robust transmission. However, it can develop some harsh shifting due to previous owner neglect, not changing out the transmission fluid. So if you're experiencing some harsh shifts, especially between first gear and second gear, you should replace the transmission filter, which is surprising because this generation, I think it's the first generation to have the filter and do a transmission flush, drive it, another flush, drive it until the harsh shifting is gone. Sometimes it takes about three flushes to get that job done. And it's best practice to use the OEM Honda Fluid, which I'll link down below for your convenience. 
and that'd be one way to help out the channel and I truly appreciate it. And the CVT transmission can experience some shuttering, which is actually kind of normal with CVTs. And the CVTs in these Hondas are arguably one of the best and most robust CVTs on the market. So I wouldn't be too worried. Now the Nissan Altima on the other hand, <laughs> those CVTs might leave you stranded. So every Honda with VTEC can develop this issue. And that's the VTC actuator going bad, which is right below this valve cover. And as you can see, this valve cover is very easy to remove. You have these bolts here, 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 and here. Remove these hoses, pop off the valve cover, and you'll be able to see the VTC. Basically what would happen is that on cold starts, you hear a grinding noise. It might not happen all the time. And if you want to fix it yourself, it should cost around $200 to repair it. Not that bad, honestly. It'll just take some patience and a little bit of know-how. You can do it. I believe in you. I've read quite a few reports of people having this VTC actuator issue with that grinding noise all the way past 200,000 miles without having any major issues. It's just an annoying noise. And I'll link a how-to video down below and the new part down below as well. And finally, the final most common issue is the starter going bad. Typically happens around 60,000 miles. This is a 120,000 mile vehicle, so it's already been replaced. You can get through it right underneath that mount. That's the engine mount. You can get through it through the wheel well. You gotta move the wheel, remove this plastic lining. Then you just have to move a sensor, then two bolts, and you can replace it. And if this starter happens to have you stuck outside of the road, you can get a hammer, bang on it from underneath the car if you can get to it. Because most likely it's the gears not lining up properly. So Honda is on the top in competition with Toyota and reliability. And the CRV is as reliable as they come. The second gen CRV can get the Black Death, which is basically the AC compressor pooping itself and you have to replace all the AC lines. And that's an expensive repair. And these will last over 200,000 miles. And whether you get the CVT or automatic, it should last you a long time as long as you're changing the fluid. You have to take care of your cars. Of course, I want to say thank you to Drive 512 Auto Ranch for allowing me to go through their cars to potentially help y'all out. If you're here in Austin, check them out. They're pretty cool guys. It's a very homey feel. They kind of, you know, they, they specialize on actually getting people on the road. Most of the time, the credit reports are paying them, but if you can pay rent, then you should have good credit. This is Chris Automotive. I always appreciate and respect another. I'll see you in the next video.